Ugh, hold on, hold on. Ah, oh, man. You think that you're ready to film, but then when you actually film, you realize you're not ready to film. Hi, hello. How are you? This video is sponsored by Epidemic Sound. We'll talk more about them in a second, but in this video, it's gonna be more of a showcase kind of video because I wanna talk about all my essential tools that I use as a video freelancer. So everything from camera gear to the computer that I use to talk about all my essentials in this video. It's gonna be fun. Uh, all right, so before I get to the actual gear itself, I, I wanna talk about all the bags that I use to bring my gear to the projects that I have to, to film at. Depending on the project and where it is, that'll help determine which bag for me to bring. This over here, this is the Nomadic Peter McKinnon bag. This is my, I guess, my, my main bag. This is where I house all my essential gear for any type of project. I use it for about maybe 50% of the time. Like it's a really good bag, carries a lot of gear, including my laptop, as well as a few days worth of clothes. So great, great, great camera bag. But this bag over here is my favorite travel bag of all time. This is the Shimoda Explore 60. And this bag is meant for uh, backpacking and hiking and if you're traveling for a while, like this is the bag to carry because not only can it carry my essential gear, but it can carry about a week's worth of clothes in this bag as well as my laptop. So pretty amazing bag, really lightweight and feels incredibly well balanced when you're traveling. And that's the thing I think a lot of people forget when they choose a camera bag. Like when you're traveling a lot, like you don't want a heavy bag, you don't want a thick bag because it's gonna throw you off balance. This bag is designed taller than most bags because it helps keep your center of gravity in the center. <laughs> but really good bag for traveling. Not all projects require a backpack to bring all the time. Sometimes you can get away with just bringing a sling bag, in which case this is my absolute favorite sling bag. And this is the Peak Design Everyday Sling. This is the 15 liters. Love this bag, carries my essentials, camera, lens, mic, uh, and sometimes that's, that's all I need. And so if I'm out vlogging somewhere, like this is the bag that I usually take because all I need is a camera lens and a mic. That's it. And this big guy, this is where I house the rest of my gear, all my essentials that I use to, to film a simple client video. So tripods, light stands, I have my Aperture 120D in here, I have grip stuff in here. All that stuff I house in this bag and we'll talk about that later. But first, let's go ahead and break down what's in my main camera bag. Ugh, probably shouldn't have done that. All right, here we go. Now this, is, can you see it? There it is, all right, right there, right in the center. This is my main camera bag. You don't see my main camera over here or my ZV-1 because obviously I'm using it, but this is where, where they go. But everything that you see here are all the essential pieces of gear that I need to film pretty much anything. Uh, let's just start with this empty slot over here. So this is where my a7S III and my 16-35G Master lens sits. I film nearly everything with that combo because it's just, it's so versatile and just so good. So that sits right over here. If I wanted to get a shot that's further out, I use my 24-70G Master lens, which sits right over here. And uh, I'm kind of tempted to get the Sony a7C because it fits perfectly in this little slot right here, but I might be holding it up for the a7 IV. And then here in this little slot, is where my ZV-1 sits. Obviously it's not here because I am using it as my top-down shot. Hi ZV-1. But that is my main camera and my backup camera. And maybe I might get the a7 IV right over here. That'd be nice. Uh, okay, so in this top section over here, uh, this is a Rode VideoMic Pro Plus. I've used this for years and it's just super solid. And I added this uh, little furry over here. Sometimes it's called a dead cat, sometimes a raccoon, sometimes a dead wombat, pretty violent. But this pretty much cuts down on any wind sound. So I just leave it on the entire time, but that's my main mic that I love using. Uh, here, this is, uh, well, this is, I call this a power pack. Uh, essentially it's an EDC bag, but in this bag, I carry all my power cables, my charger, like all that stuff just stays right over here. So I got my uh, power brick from a MacBook Pro. I got my battery charger for my Sony a7S III. Got a couple USB-C cables, lightning cables, adapters, dongles, all that kind of stuff stays in this bag, just kind of packed nice and neat. And uh, the pouch that I'm using right now is from Wandered. And uh, what is it called exactly? This is a, this is a pretty cool bag. It's called the, it's called the travel pouch, I'm pretty sure. I don't see it, but all the gear that I'm gonna talk about, I'll make sure to put in the links down below. So definitely check that out if you want. But yeah, that is my power pack on my EDC bag. Uh, all right, moving down. This is the Rode Wireless uh, Go To set. Usually the entire set is in here, but I'm actually using that mic right now. Hear that? 
That's the Rode Love Go, and I have the transmitter right over here in my pocket. But I love these wireless mics because one, they're really small, and two, like the quality of it is just incredible for the price. And I love that they come with two transmitters, so if I'm doing an interview with two people uh, on camera, then I can use both these transmitters to capture audio, so that's pretty awesome. Along with that, uh, this is my Rode pouch, and here is where I have like Rode accessories. Like, I have cables and whatnot, so all my Rode accessories I put in this pouch right over here. Uh, right next to it is my filter pouch. This is from Nomadic, and all the filters that I use, I keep right in here. Like this is this is the best filter pouch that I've ever had, and everything is organized by how often I use it. So I have my variable ND filters, I got my Promis filters over here, I got a, a Cinebloom filter from Moment, uh, and just, yeah, this is where I, I house my filters, all the filters that I could ever use in this pouch. All right, we talked about the lens. This is my camera strap. This is the Peak Design. Uh, oh, what's it called? It's the Peak Design. Whatever that name is, this is my favorite camera strap because it's just super easy to use and incredibly easy to adjust, so there's that. Right over here, this is my GoPro case, even though it says Zhiyun. <laughs> it's like the best case that I could use to, to house my GoPro and accessories. But this is the GoPro Hero 9. Is it the 9? Yeah, it's a nine. I forget, there's like so many. But I house that over here as well as the clip, extra battery, and uh, mounts that I house in this little pouch over there. You never know when you need a GoPro shot, and so I just I like keeping everything all in one case right there. Don't you just appreciate how organized this bag is? So good, right? This big case over here is where I house my Mavic Mini 2, an awesome, awesome drone, and small enough where I can fit it in this case as well as the controller. I made a video talking about that, so feel free to check it out if you want to, but this is where I house my Mavic Mini. Just below that is the light that I carry. This is the Loom Cube Panel Pro. I freaking love this light. It's bright, it's bicolor, it's RGB, has different effects on it, and slim enough to fit in any camera bags. And that is where I put that light right there. And right next to it are just your common accessories. You have a rocket blower over here to blow any dust from your lens. You got a lens pen to, to clean stuff off your lens and other things. I got my multi-tool over here because you never know when you need like a screwdriver or pliers or a knife. And then of course I got my gaff tape because gaff tape is life. And then over here um, are just other things I like bringing, this is a really cool storyboard notebook where I just, you know, I can draw certain scenes like I did over here and make notes and stuff like that. This helps me uh, be organized when I need to plan a shot. Right next to that is my media card wallet. Uh, this is where I house all my SD cards, micro SD cards, CF Express Type A cards. All that is right here in this pouch. And I leave it right there. And then moving up, this is my camera battery pouch. Uh, I have the Sony A7S III, and it's always a good idea to bring batteries because you never know. I mean, when you're freelancing, like it's imperative to bring extra batteries because things happen. So yeah, extra batteries I carry over here. And here I have my audio cable from my Video Mic Pro Plus, as well as a, a furry for my Sony ZV-1 because there's a mic on top of the camera and attaching this onto the hot shoe of the camera can reduce that nasty wind sound. And so I just leave that right over here. All right, so these are all the essentials I use to, to film most of my projects. Again, depending on the project, I can decide to, to move gear to my travel bag or to my sling bag. Every project's different and requires certain things, but most of the gear that I use very often are housed in this bag right here. So since we're talking about my essentials as a video freelancer, Epidemic Sound has been my go-to music platform to not just get music for my YouTube videos, but for my client projects as well. By going with their commercial plan, you can go through all of Epidemic Sound's diverse library and be legally covered for social media, websites, and at the same time, get simple clearance for client productions and unlimited use in digital ads. The commercial plan also includes sub-licensing rights, which means it can legally cover the right to sub-license content containing Epidemic Sound music to other third parties, so that's cool. And of course, I'd have to tell you about the amazing music that's in their library, not to mention the sound effects, super easy to search and find as well. Such a good platform, and if you're like me, you make videos on YouTube, YouTube, as well as work with the clients. Signing up for the commercial plan is your best bet because you could use music and sound effects for both your YouTube videos and your client projects. Easy. And if you want, you can check them out for free for 30 days by using my link down below. And if you do end up signing up for the yearly plan, then you can actually get 20% off. So there you go. Money in your pocket. Huge shout out to Epidemic Sound for sponsoring this video. But now let's get to the rest of my essentials as a freelancer. All right, time for the big boy. I'm not strong. Oh, you heard that? Oh, that was my knee. Here we go, are we centered up? I don't know if we're centered up. We're centered up over here. We need to center the camera up, up more, right there. Okay, here we go, we are centered. Okay, so in this bag, I house everything else I need to shoot a project. Uh, let's just start with the front pouch over here. 
In the front pouch, I have my little egg crate grid that I attach onto my light dome. Uh, and this is really great because if you want more of a direct uh, lighting effect, then I attach this onto the light dome to give me that effect. So I house that over here. And then also I have my color gels. This is from Roscoe, it's my favorite pack. And uh, basically if I wanna color up a scene, I just take it and I attach it to my light and it'll give me color, so. All right, here we go. In three, two, one. Skadoosh! Ooh. Oh, this is where I store the rest of my gear. A full on production house in this awesome, awesome bag. Oh boy, where do I begin? Uh, let's just start over here, shall we? Uh, okay, so this is a uh, reflector. This is actually a 501 reflector. I'm not gonna talk about it, you know what it is, but it's always good to carry a reflector no matter what shoot you're doing. Just underneath that, uh, this is where I have my gimbal. This is the Zhiyun Crane 2S. I have a slider. This is the Rhino Rove Pro. And I have other things in here, like I got a surge with multiple outlets. Uh, I got some black foil if I need to like control the direction of the light and just a, a pouch of my gimbal accessories. And so I leave that over here. But if I ever need to do like a gimbal shot or a sliding shot, like this is the compartment that I house all those things. And I try to pack it pretty tightly because you know, if I'm moving it about, you don't want your gear moving all over the place, it will damage it. And so I try to pack it nice and neat. So there's that. Uh, right over here is where I house all my tripods and stands. I don't wanna take it all out. I mean, can you just take my word for it? Like all my tripods and my light stands are right here, including a boom arm if I ever wanna attach a shotgun mic to it. Most of my stance and tripods are from Manfrotto or Impact. They've been pretty reliable for me, and so if you wanna check out my tripods and my stands, then again, links will be down below. Uh, all right, so up over here, this is my main light. This is my power light. This is the ever so famous Aperture 120D Mark II. I freaking love this light. It's actually, whoop, <laughs> Never mind. This actually used to be my main YouTube light, but the lights that I use now in this studio is the Amaran 100D. I got two of them. I got my key light over here and I got my backlight over there. But for client work, uh, sometimes I just need a more powerful light, which is why the 120D Mark II is perfect for that kind of stuff. So I house that right over here. And then of course I have the control box uh, as well as the cables that go along with the Aperture 120D Mark II. As far as uh, light modifier goes, uh, I bring the light dome Mark II because it's super easy to set up. Like that locking release feature on that modifier is so incredible. It just makes it super easy to set up and take down. And so that's the main light I carry in a separate bag. This slot is empty because I'm kind of waiting for two V-mount batteries to arrive. And when they arrive, I just place them right over here. And you know, when I can, I try to go wireless. Like I just don't like plugging things in. And so if I can get away with lighting a scene by just using batteries, then I totally will. And so those will be arriving pretty soon, hopefully. All right, moving on, I have uh, this over here. This is a windscreen, forgot about this. This is actually uh, from Rode. And basically you attach the Rode Wireless Go onto this slot over here, cover it up, and you can use it as a on-field uh, mic. So if you wanna do like man on the street kind of videos, uh, this is the mic to do it at. I've never used it before, but you know, if I ever need to, then I have it. All right, just below that is my accessories bag. Well, this I kinda meant to use for my Mavic Mini. Two drone. This is from Aldrin and his company Flight Path. I'm using his other cases for his Air 2S if I need to bring the drone in a separate bag. And so now I kind of use these smaller bags for like accessories, which is really incredible. So here I house just my grip stuff. So I have gaff tape, I got pony clamps, I got other clamps and just other things. So that kind of stuff I house over here. And very similarly, this is my accessories pouch. I have other things that I use for like mounting things. Like I have a hot shoe bracket that goes on a light stand and just other clamps. So those kind of accessories I house in these two pouches. And then lastly, I have just miscellaneous things. Like I have my little action pod over here to help me grip small accessories to uh, certain things. I've got a dual bracket if I want to attach two things at the same time. Just various grip stuff that I would use on set. And that's essentially it. All right, so that's that. Uh, some honorable mentions that I forgot to, to mention. Uh, if you are using lights and other things that you need to, to set up, it's always a good idea to use a sandbag. This is a 15 pound sandbag and basically it just helps you just lock down your light so that it doesn't tip over and hurt your client because you don't want to do that. And then the last thing I want to mention is uh, a ferny pad. This is a ferny pad or a furniture pad and this has multiple uses. If you're carrying a lot of gear in the back of your car, like your seats are down, it's a good idea to place this ferny pad 
first and then your gear on top of that because you don't want to ruin the fabric of your car or if you're using a friend's car. And also this is really good to use to help dampen sound. And so sometimes if you're filming an interview and you're filming on hardwood floors, like you could place this ferny pad underneath your subject. And even though it's not perfect, like that will help reduce like any reverb uh, in that scene. And so yeah, this is such a great thing to, to bring. And also they're pretty, they're fairly cheap. I got this at Lowe's, but you can get them pretty much anywhere. But yeah, these are definitely two essential items to bring on any film shoot. All right, so now we're gonna talk about computers, editing programs and apps and other services that I use to run my business. Uh, for computers, I actually have two that I use. I have a MacBook Pro, that's the M1 version, and I use that computer for editing, obviously, and for most things that I do, not just with my business, but just in my life in general. And I also have a PC laptop, it's the Dell Precision 5750, and that laptop is a powerhouse. And I mainly use it to edit videos in Premiere Pro, because Premiere Pro doesn't play well with Macs. It's just, ugh, they just they really suck on Macs, they really do. But on a PC like my Dell 5750, like it just, it cuts through. So I, I love using that computer to edit my videos. Since I already mentioned it, my main editing program is Premiere Pro. I've been using that program for well over 10 years. I just know it in and out. It's just very frustrating when you're trying to edit on a Mac, hence, the PC. But yeah, Premiere Pro and the entire Adobe Creative Suite, Lightroom, Photoshop, After Effects, I use uh, nearly all the time for, for all my projects. I also use Final Cut Pro to edit some of my videos as well, and it depends on the project. Like, if I'm doing more of a, a creative kind of thing, then I'll tend to go to Final Cut Pro, but I would say 80% of the projects I edit on Premiere Pro. All right, so computers, uh, programs, uh, what else? Oh yes, uh, the actual things that actually run my business. So last two essential tools that I use as a freelancer, and that's PayPal and QuickBooks. With PayPal, I can easily send invoices to my clients. PayPal just makes it super easy for me to get paid. And also if I need to hire a freelancer or some other vendor, then I just use PayPal to, to pay them. So PayPal, awesome. And the last thing that I use to run my business is QuickBooks. QuickBooks just makes it super easy to keep track of your incomings and outgoings. Like here in the States, it's really important to make sure that your finances is in check, especially when it comes to tax season. And when it comes time to tax season, all my expenses are categorized into specific business expenses, which just makes my life a lot easier when that season comes. But yeah, those are all the tools that I use as a video freelancer. I know that was a lot. I know we covered everything from camera bags to camera gear to computers, apps, and all that stuff. But hopefully this video was helpful to you if you are trying to figure out how to run your own business. Oh my gosh, that was a long one. That was a long one, that's what she said. All right guys, I'm out of here. Everything that I mentioned in this video is listed down below from the camera gear to epidemic sound to my computers, all that stuff listed down below. So check them out if you are interested. But yeah, thanks for watching, thanks for hanging out. You know what? You deserve an ice cream. Yeah, you go get one. I'm gonna go get one. Okay, bye.